just got out of the store and it looks like I found my next YouTube video. Gaslands Micro Machines. I've heard these were coming out and I told myself I was gonna make a travel Gaslands pack once they did and it appears that they came out. I've got the three cars here ready to roll. It's gonna be about 104 degrees today. And so let's set course for the customs lab and we will get at it. Crack these open and see what they're all about. All right, we're back in the lab and we have these ready to go. If you want to see the back here, I can show you the back and you can pause it. These are the ones that will come with, looks like there's four sets. I ended up getting that set right there, the fourth set. The other three weren't too interested in. Maybe it's a little bit of gas landsy on that truck right there, but uh, number 15, kind of a little gas lands. But other than that, I think the, the muscle car pack is gonna fit the best <clears throat> possible terrain. And it looks like we've got ourselves a packet insert. World packs. Actually some decent looking Gasland type stuff. You've got some cop cars, you got some taxis, even a mail truck. That mail truck looks very interesting. I could see a garbage truck Gaslands build. That could be kind of fun to you. Those look like they're going to come out of the playset. So it looks like there might be like a world pack. I wonder if these are going to be a blind bag or get a hauler here. Super Van City. So it looks like we're getting kind of a glimpses of what they're coming out with. Single packs, tow truck, police cruiser, some ultra rare stuff, some rare packs, and then you get the starter packs that I came out. And so there's your insert. Hmm. And then on these we have Looks like numbers 18, 19, and not, wait, that can't be right. And so we have number 17, 18, and 19. Conveniently packed with annoying twist ties and, ooh, look at that little piece of plastic. I wonder what we could do with that. Let's try to work that into our build. So one thing interesting is I'm unwrapping these. You could see that they have kind of a, something that goes in and under them. So these bottom, these bottom things right here, looks like it wraps all the way under the car. I do like the fact that it does have screws here. Those aren't pins, so that can be really easy to remove. I don't even think I'll need to glue the car back together. We could probably just glue, screw it in. I will take it apart though and we'll figure it out. Also, I'm noticing you've got a really neat kind of sheen, like a blue teal sheen on these wheels. That's kind of fun. And here we have them out of the bag. Um, going over this here, I, I would was kind of interested in these and I think they're really kind of cool almost like a the bottom of a turret here like if we were to take this on to this car and then throw a little turret on it you know it could be the top of a turret or or something interesting of some sort not exactly sure but I'm saving these if we don't use them in this build I'd definitely use them in some other build some good plastic right there um, Detail looks pretty decent. I'm not sure what what this one's all about. It looks like it has a window that stretches all the way across There's no really it doesn't really break apart Right there, and so I don't this one's not calling me right now to customize but I Think that could be a benefit later on to not have that Hood 
separated. It looks like it's almost a window all the way through. So, kind of a futuristic looking car. But, um, you know, well, we can figure something out eventually. But that one, not going to do anything with that one right now. Um, one of these two, I think, are, are calling me. Um, I like the the intake on this one. This one looks kind of fun to, uh, might be a good one just to kind of quickly repaint. But I did want to match these up because there's also like the die cast uh, nano Hot Wheels out there. Uh, the Fast and the Furious ones and you might have seen the, uh, the Back to the Future ones and um, yeah, again, more Fast and the Furious, or um, not Fast and the Furious, what am I thinking? That one is um, Transformers, but to see how they kind of match up against those. And so, you know, let's go muscle car versus muscle car here. You can see the Hollywood machines matched up against it. Micro machines are definitely a little bit stylized. And the Hollywood ones are a little bit more realistic. But there's a really good chance that they could fit in the same world. And that was kind of one thing I was a little bit concerned with and wondering, because I, I did pick some of these up to customize as well. And so I think they might fit in the same world. It might be nice to have a couple options for like a travel gas lens. And so, uh, but today I think we're gonna focus on the micro machines. You can see just some more matching up. Not, not too bad. Line them up. You can see there's definitely some ends sticking out end to end some of them may be a little bit longer than others but still fun nonetheless it's great to see my machines come back I like the kind of cartoony style it's a little bit stylized but I kind of I accept that and I'll uh, I'll run with it so without further ado let's tr go into the bits bin and I'll, uh, I'll pull some stuff out off camera, then we'll come back and I'll kind of go over a game plan of what we're going to do to one of these two. Well, there it is. That's uh, pretty much all I'm going to be using for this gas lens build is uh, the thing with the micro machines is you don't need much, like less than an inch square of material. To figure it out and um, a pair of tweezers I noticed as I'm pulling these things out I noticed that I'm gonna need some tweezers in order to be putting things onto this car so I've got a couple uh, just to kind of go over what we got we got a couple of um, resistors here that I think the game plan is to might be a little bit of a gun generator something uh, it's Again, tweezers. Gonna be putting that right on the side of the door here. Possibly drilling in a hole right here to have that go into the car. So it'll look like a little generator or something, but something along those lines. Maybe right on top of that so I don't mess that vent up right there. But that's the game plan. And um, this is just a little piece of metal bracing that I found from an electronic that's going to act as kind of a really cool spike of some sort, I'm thinking. So we'll throw it on the back there. Right here, I think they're a piece from a typewriter. And they're going to be used as armor plating. I think I'll probably put one on each side either right there right there I think probably kind of hugging that right there so they'll go one on each side like that I wanted to fill the hole up a little bit right there I didn't want that hole to stay 
solid and so I think what I'm gonna do I believe what I'm gonna do is throw them into there and just have that kind of cover up the little hole so that it'll look like it's I don't know screwed on bolted on or something I might need to fill that in with some sort of epoxy we'll see how it looks once it gets in there and then cross that bridge as come to it we do have a little bit of a clearance issue there so what I'll probably do is just take a snip and kind of snip this down so that it's just that top but I'll have to be very careful when I do that another screw for the same side and then we have these ferrules here they're just wire ferrules you can get them in a lot of electronic stores and stuff like that but these I think will be maybe try and throw some tailpipes in along the back something along those lines but I'm not sure if that's gonna work because we'll have to see what's inside the car um, be nice if we can get maybe I'm seeing like right here on this part of the car one here one here or maybe two here um, probably just one and one is what I'm gonna shoot for as long as I can get the clearance to drill into those and then I'll probably have to cut these ferrules up as I had said these are just some screws which is kind of nice instead of having to deal with drills or something like that I believe that you can just unscrew this right here this is a metallic base I love these because go to bit like Harbor Freight for a dollar or even free sometimes but they they stick to the the screws will stick right in there and you won't lose them and so for this right here one's in there a little bit stronger I don't want to strip them because I I doubt these screws are really good screws I'm being careful not to strip the screw as I as I pull it out Ooh, there we go and there's the inside I'll give you a look at what the chassis looks like here it doesn't even look like the car well I mean on the bottom of the chassis there's no place for the wheel this actually feels heavy I wonder if it's metal there's a little bit of metal to it it's not magnetized but it does feel heavier than this car like the plastic this is plastic this you could tell has a little bit of weight to it a little bit of weight um, not exactly sure where that weight is coming from is it's a little bit of metallic you can see that it is magnetized a little bit not enough to really grip on the magnet but definitely a more durable piece there's no like you have in most cars there's a little track to lay the wheels there's none of that here that track actually lies there so I guess for us gas landers that's gonna be really easy what we can do is just glue these back on right there and then there's a really good chance it's not gonna roll so that's probably what I'll do but there's not really much to uh, the inside of this car but I did want to kind of open it up to see what it's all about and then uh, probably just go <laughs> and bring it right back but I do want to get uh, an area for the ferrules let's see if I were to drill in right here they're gonna come in right into this area which might obstruct the wheel well and so I'm trying to think of where the best place for the ferrules are and the more I think about it the more I think they might go really better in the center all right we are back it's all glued up and so now the car is ready for the first bit to be glued on which I think is going to be this guy right here give you an idea of kind of what that's going to look like we're just going to center it right on the back and so a little bit of glue there right there and we're just going to center it as it goes and again this is a post-apocalyptic vehicle so it doesn't need to be perfect because after about 
Well, before the first gate, this thing's going to be a mess anyway in, in real life. Now, the hard part is going to be getting these ferals into the into this position. I'm just going to set that stuff right here and let it pool. And then I'll take one of these. I'll take one of these. And just drop it right in. And it's going to bond instantly. So hopefully this will work. Look at it. That's a beautiful thing. There we go. There's one. Let's see if we can get another one going. A little bit of glue. Come on. Set it up. There you go. There you go. Set you right there. Don't move. Well, that, that, uh, it's gonna need to come off. And we need to try that one more time. Let that sit for a minute. And I think we'll have it. Alright, next up is the resistors on the side. The maybe kind of gunish looking things that I'm going to be putting here. And um, really, I'm trying to figure out a good place where they're going to fit. That might be kind of cool. good on top of the car I like them on the side the best I think right into that I don't know how many times this is probably the only tool that I've really cut myself on quite a bit it's the most consistently dangerous tool I've used Got a nice clean hole there. Seems like it drilled through really easy on this plastic, so that's a good thing. I don't know how a actual drill would work, but this kind of works. Now we got a wire here, and we're gonna bend. Which one's the longest end here? I think this one's the longest end, so we'll we'll bend this end in and hopefully there we go and if that's right it will fit right into that now all we need to do Add some glue right along that edge. Pop that into, whoops, is not liking that. See, it only does this when after I glue it. The test run wasn't this hard, no. And the same thing, we'll just drop that in there. And it's a lot easier with a longer lead on that resistor. And there we go. 
Well, I think that um, I'm going to leave these areas right here open. And really, there's nothing else I can do but just paint this thing. So I'm going to go uh, give it a prime, then a quick paint job, and that's really about it. I don't even know what kind of paint job I'm going to go with. I'm probably just going to stay with the black and maybe just touch it up with some rust and some muddy paint. I mean, it's just going to be a really quick paint job, but for the most part, we're, we're done. It was a really quick and simple build and uh, really enjoyed it so far. So we'll get some box spray paint on this thing, break out our paints and uh, just see what we can do with this. And so here's what we have after the primer. Looking halfway decent. I think I'm gonna start out with a base green, maybe a little bit of gunmetal gray. Gloss up the windshield, weather it with an airbrush, weather it with some weathering powder, homemade cheap weathering powder, and then uh, we'll call it good. So I'm going to get some green on it, and I'm going to get the base colors down, and then we'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like. All right, so hand holding here, I apologize for the shaky video, but here it is. We've got the base coats down. Base coat was the uh, US dark green for the base of the body. The metal pieces here and back were going to be the gunmetal gray from Vallejo Model Color. The obviously just hit a little bit of red, doesn't really necessarily mean exactly what you need right there. But it was a just a flat red. Um, a little bit of touch up on the silver there and the silver on the guns here. Really it's just any silver paint you got but silver. And then I'm not sure if it comes out in the video, but the depending on how the light hits it, you look at the windows, the windows kind of have a little bit of a shine to it. That is from a paint called Turbo Dork 3D Glasses. So that's what we got so far. Break out the airbrush. I'm gonna do a quick airbrush on it. Really, I think it's just gonna be some blacks and some dust to kick and weather it a little bit, and then we'll uh, come back and show you what what's going on with it. All right, let's get some better lighting in here. The mess on the table continues to grow, <clears throat> but we do have now a little bit better weathering on our vehicle. It's a little bit glossy. Right now I'm not how the, not sure how the camera is picking this up, but a little bit glossy, but we uh, are looking pretty good so far. And so to go over what we do with the airbrush, I'll go over the colors. If you're following along at home and you want to play around, uh, these Comart colors, I love them. They're pretty much the only paint that I've used since I've found them at least on small stuff like this, metal cars and stuff like that. Um, this is a translucent soft dirt. Uh, this is a light dust, so I hit it with a light dust first. And so I came in with the lightest color and I hit it all the way around. And then after that light dust, I covered it up with a little bit of soft dirt. So you've got two layers of dirt and then a translucent blue-gray smoke, all calm art. And then that blue-gray smoke gave you that kind of dirt that we're seeing here, that, that black that's coming in and around. And so, I'm not sure, I'm just filming this on my phone throughout the day, so I'm not really sure how this is coming out, but we'll see how this video comes out. Maybe I'll do more quick videos like this, less editing, more creating. That's really all I'm about. And so, uh, yeah, let me clean this up and then we'll get some rust on this. I'll show you kind of my trick for rust. I've showed it in one other video, but uh, we'll go over it again. So uh, give me a minute to clean all this up. I'll get my uh, pastels out and we'll do some rust. All right, and so for this technique, you're just gonna need really some isopropyl alcohol, some dry pastel, a little bit of a razor blade, and a brush that you don't care about. And that is all we need to do. So I'm gonna set the car aside for a minute so we can actually make this powder. And 
and you want to find a good rust color, which I am fortunate enough to have here. And so all you do to make this, you can a piece of foil, um, and then you just shave it. And that's all you really need. You don't need much, especially for this little Gaslands car, which is not going to be that big. So you get a little bit of dust there. And then you take some uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, however you want to call it. And I'm going to grab a little toothpick so I can mix it up. And just get a port right onto it. The trick is that you got to be very careful with the amount of alcohol or the amount of this stuff that you put on the car. You want to do it in you know small layers because it's not going to look that bright and vibrant when it goes on, but as it dries, it's going to dry extremely vibrant. And so the color is going to come out as it dries. And we're just going to come down there. Just around the wheel well. Right in there. There we go. Now we're getting a good cover. See that? See how that's looking? Sure, that's coming out on camera. But we will get some good pictures of this a little later on. All right. All right. I think we're just about done with this. I'm going to go ahead and spray it, and then we'll uh, get a good camera out and get some good pictures of it. And uh, that's about it. So thanks for joining me. It was a quick really fast build but uh, overall I think these little micro machines are gonna turn out to be some fun gas lands especially with you know the more uh, cars that come out the more styles because right now the utilitarians aren't that good but as you saw we have some uh, UPS trucks and some UPS uh, USPS trucks coming out and uh, a taxi driver and, and so we've got some fun whimsical stuff to play with um, Other than that, again, thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll catch you next time.